What I think of when I hear the word theater is alive. Theater is always alive. There are people there breathing with you. There are people there crying with you and laughing with you. It's, you know, looking out on a stage where the lights are moving and costumes are moving and knowing that everyone is in the same moment at the same time in a theater and it can't be duplicated. And it's, every night is different, every minute is different. What inspired me and what still inspires me is, um, it's just a love of performing, you know. It's, it's not sitting behind a desk and doing a nine to five, it's being able to, you know, be a different character every time and kind of escape and um, put yourself into someone else's shoes. In theater, I think, you know, you do full body acting. Your, your hands act, your feet act, your, every part of your body is seen. So you really have to encompass the character all the way through your body. I, I get asked this question, what, what, what would I tell someone if they wanted to start acting all the time? I always say, you'll find your way, you'll make it, everyone has a different path, everyone, either you go to school, you don't go to school, you move to LA, you move to New York, you move to London, you will find your way um, in the theater world, we are a, a loving family community. Involve yourself in theater, see theater, watch theater, um, and it'll all work out. It worked out for me. I was inspired to become an interior designer by the fact that when I was young, we moved every two or three years, and I lived in all kinds of different houses, saw all kinds of different styles of architecture and interiors, and in each place that I moved to, the most exciting thing was creating my bedroom, creating a wonderful and comfortable space that I could live in. And I had a lot of opportunities to do that. Hi, I'm Charlotte Dumont, and when I grow up, I want to be an interior designer because I love art, I love color, I love tile, and I love travel. Anybody who's looking at going into the interior design field should get out as much as possible, go to museums, go to art openings, go to walks in the forest, go travel. Everything that you can do and put in front of your eyes to give you an experience of what the world looks like will inform and ultimately enrich the kind of designs that you put out. I would say to girls who have been told that they can't, you can. I have many times been told I couldn't do th things as a girl, especially growing up as an athletic girl. I had uh, no opportunities to do sports because I grew up in rural Minnesota and we had nothing. So I, everything I did, I did with my boy friends who were also athletic which is why I became a physical education teacher later in life. And for me to tell the girls now that there were no sports for girls when I was in school is unbelievable to them. They can't imagine life that way, why they would have it for boys and not the girls. The whole mission of an all-girls school is to empower young women that they really can do anything they desire to do. That's the entire mission of Marlboro School. The girls are everything. They're the athletic program, they're the leaders, they're the mathematicians, they're the scientists. The robotics team is very, very successful and many girls are going into that field. Now that he's mad at you, now he needs revenge for you. 
Robotics is kind of the field or the study of incorporating the more physical aspects of machinery, like you know, an apparatus, um, with the more abstract concept of artificial intelligence. So you're kind of combining some basic code with you know, something physical like Legos, for example, and you're using that to have a robot do a certain task or complete a certain function. In layman's terms, for a seven-year-old's understanding, robotics is a piece of machinery that you build that does something. If you want to do robotics, do robotics. Uh, there's plenty of resources all over on the internet. Uh, go If there's a robotics competition in your town, go to it. There's going to be plenty of teams probably looking for members. You can ask people. I mean, every the whole robotics community is extremely welcoming and every incorporative, so just go for it. Hi, my name's Feliz and I love to play the drums. My inspiration for playing basketball was really my just love for sports. So I started off actually playing tennis. That was the first sport that I played. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I focused a lot on it, hard work ethic, but it was an individual sport. So I got joined by my friends to come and join them to play basketball as a team and to get together as friends. And I just fell in love with the sport and wanted to apply that work ethic that I established in tennis to just pursue it and to try and be the best that I could be. I've played professional at the professional level, so I played basketball at UCLA and then I went on and played professionally in Europe. I was fortunate enough to go to a school where both the women and men's team were treated pretty equally um, in the sense of uh, how they were supported. Um, as far as in general how women's sports and men's sports uh, they equal out as far as pay, um, as far as reward. It, it's not quite equal, um, so we're still trying to break that barrier and trying to get the same salaries, trying to get the same people in the seats to appreciate us. There's been many, many times in my life that I've been told that I couldn't do something because I was a girl. Um, from playing sports to on uh, trying to choose different classes um, in college to um, now I've started my own business and uh, you know to be a female entrepreneur and female-led company that there would be things that I couldn't do or there would be things where I I needed uh, the support or help of, of basically a, a man or a male uh, so there's been many times I've been told what I what I can't do both because I'm a female and just because people don't want to always see you succeed. What I would tell any young girl, um, any female that's been told that they can't do something is just not to listen. To really believe in yourself, uh, to know that whatever you want to achieve, that you're able to achieve it if you put your mind to it. That no matter what obstacle that you go through, that you can come out of it. Uh, if you just have, have the faith and, and work hard, really work hard and try and prove them wrong and believe in yourself. Surround yourself with a good support system. That's very important because there all will be times when you'll doubt yourself and when you'll feel that you can't do something. Um, and that's okay too. Um, and just know that you'll pick yourself back up and you can achieve anything that you want to. Absolutely. I've been told I couldn't do something because I was a girl on several occasions. But the most important ones were when I was told um, there wasn't a place really for women in architecture, which taught me all about three-dimensional design and working with tools and, and construction. And um, another time in a business setting where um, a male counterpart was deemed better than me because he was male. In my class, I have both boys and girls, 
And in a majority of classes, the girls come to the class with some skills, the same skills as the guys, but sometimes the guys have a little more bravado. And they think that because of their gender, that they're going to be better at something than their, their girl, the female counterparts. And that couldn't be further than the truth. Because it's all about your hands. It's all about fine and gross motor skills. And that's an individual thing. And sometimes the girls excel at working with tools better than the guys do. And so it humbles everybody because it's not easy to do certain things. But once you've mastered the skill, everybody succeeds. I believe that working with tools empowers women because they normally see guys at construction sites, their fathers, their grandfathers, and they don't normally pick up a drill. But once they do so and they become familiar with that drill, what it can do, and that it doesn't really take much but the determination to pick up the tool and learn about the tool and master it, then they develop a familiarity which leads to self-confidence and self-esteem. My name is Mirabelle and I'm in the Fantastic Furniture class. I love working with wood. My favorite part is sanding, but I also really like painting and assembling the furniture. It's amazing. For girls who have been told that they can't, I would say do it anyway. Um, don't let anybody's words determine your future and how you're going to uh, approach a situation. Hi, my name is Wong and I love water sports. There's always been an air by, um, when I was a, a little girl, by boys and also then um, somewhat growing up in a college that uh, girls or women weren't quite as talented athletically as men. Um, the way that affected me was that sometimes I would set out to prove myself better than them. So that was part of a driving and a motivating force when someone would tell me that um, I couldn't do something because um, I was a girl or they um, gave me the impression that they were superior simply because they were a boy or a male. When I first began coaching water polo, there was very few girls in the sport. In the years since um, I started in 2000 coaching water polo, the number is at least doubled in the number of girls that are interested in playing the sport, but the number of schools that are offering that for girls in high school. And um, the growth has just been exponential in the availability, but also in the level of play. The girls take to the sport very well, and they um, are very coachable, and they progress with the skills sometimes quicker than the boys. When a girl comes to me and tells me that someone told her she can't do something because she's a female, I first try and uh, make sure that they are pursuing something that is within their passion. Um, I encourage them not to pursue something strictly because they were told they couldn't, but that because they're pursuing it because it's their passion. Once it's identified that it is their passion, I encourage them to um, work as hard as they can, get input from many different sources, and to um, pursue it with all their energy that they can. When a student finds their passion in a, in a certain sport, that is definitely um, a joy for them and they would be willing to put in extra hours and extra hard work. First piece of advice for girls that are interested in water polo or any water sports is to make sure that they enjoy and they have a passion for the sports in the pool. After they say they love the water, then I make sure that they it matches their personality. Water polo is very uh, challenging for women, but the life lesson of being able to set a goal, lay out a plan to reach the goal, and then assess the process and whether you've reached the goal in the end is the empowering factor that will stay with the athletes and the girls for the rest of their lives.
My name is Molly and I love fencing. I have been told I couldn't do a lot of things because I was a girl. I was told I couldn't play football. I was told I couldn't do a lot of sports. Um, it wasn't that I was told specifically yeah. that you can't do this because you're a girl. It was just sort of implied and there were things you didn't do. So it was, it was different, but there were a lot of things. I mean, the job that I do is, is mostly men. And I've been told, it wasn't that they said that, you know, girls or women can't be comedians, but we're, it's, oh, well, women aren't funny. Girls aren't funny. We're not as funny as the guys. So it's, it's, there's a lot of things that I've been told, you know, you can't do that. You can't do that. So boy, when I found out about football, I just thought, wow, <laughs> this is amazing. I want to give this a try. When I tell people I'm a football player, they, well, they, they'll say flag football, and I say, no, tackle, and they say, really, with helmet and pads? And I say, yeah, if I'm going to tackle, I really should have the helmet and pads. Uh, and then they don't believe me because I'm kind of small. Uh, and I just sort of point out to them that there's a bunch of different positions in football, you know, like you look at the wide receivers that are really great. They're long, you know, tall guys that are kind of thin, so you don't really need to be that big. You need people of all sizes. In fact, one of my teammates, who's a pretty big girl, and she plays on the line in football, which if, I don't know if you follow football or not, but they're the ones that are you know, up, up in the front, usually the bigger people. And this one gal told me that it was the first time in her life, because she'd always been a big girl, and she said it was the first time in her life that she was ever valued because of her size. Usually the reaction that I get from people yeah. is they don't believe that I'm playing or they think that I'm playing either in the uh, you know, flag league or the lingerie league or something. I said, no, it's real contact football and they're usually surprised and they're kind of the one they're really surprised is if they come see the game because it's a really good game and the they're pretty good athletes out there I'm usually on the bench by the way <laughs> to little girls or women that want to pursue a male dominated field is go for it just do it if you're good at what you do you'll get respected for what you do and until people see someone doing it they don't know it can be done so just get out there and, and do it there's no reason you can't do anything that you want to do Did that happen? That's what I'm asking. I didn't zoom in on the Hamilton though. No. Oh. Because that was disgusting. 